So what has this to do with Burbank? Well, here's Spencer's obit from the 8th, 8th February 1917 Los Angeles Times. He died in Burbank. This gentleman lived on 220 San Jose Avenue and his funeral was at the Burbank Methodist Church. So, Edward W. Spencer, an honest to hero from the 1860s, he was confined to a wheelchair for the rest of his life because of his exertions involved in rescuing those people. So, ladies and gentlemen, Edward W. Spencer. And so we're going to go on with more uh, musical Burbank. Um, how many famous people do you think you know, sung here in Burbank? I think we're going to find uh, this one's very interesting. Be true to your school. Does everybody, does everybody realize that song was written for Burbank High? Yes. Uh, how many class of 67 people from Burbank High do we have here? Okay. All right. All right. Don't be shy. Raise your hand. Where's Kathy Palmer? Is she here? Okay. Anyway, Jody Gable was a, uh, she apparently was the um, Beach Boys um, fan club president. And she met the Beach Boys at an all correct dance and they asked her to head up their fan club. Jody was an active member of the drill team and her loyalty to BHS became the genesis of one of the, the Beach Boys biggest hits. Jody recalled, Brian Wilson was a genius and could come up with lyrics on the spot. We were eating chili fries. I wonder if they were at Tom's. I don't know. <laughs> No. One day in the name of the day, in Hawthorne, and he penned Fun, Fun, Fun. Jody was driving the guys crazy with her drill team stories, and Wilson came up with Be True to Your School, which coincidentally contains part on, of On Wisconsin Burbank's fight song. On her 16th birthday, the Beach Boys threw a party and performed the song and other things in her backyard. So there she is with her 1960s flip. Uh, a tiny little petite thing with the Beach Boys. So when you hear "Be True to Your School," thank Bull. Go Bull. Sorry. And you want to go? Yeah, quiet, quiet. Um, Mike and I, uh, we have a friend, Bob Avery. He's also in the class of '74, and now lives in Utah. And uh, we were talking. Well, I was talking to him, and he said, "Oh, by the way, you know Randy Rhodes? He went to Burbank High. I used to play guitar with him." No, get out of town. You used to play guitar with Randy Rhodes. Well, indeed he did. Randy Rhodes, in case some of you don't know who he is, it's sort of a gen generational thing. He's considered a, uh, a legendary rock guitarist. Very talented young man, tragically died young, airplane crash. He was in the uh, class of 1974. Same as, uh, um, wait a minute, where are we going? Yes, class of 74. Uh, guitarist from 72 to 79. His mother owned Colleen Music in Burbank. We bought a spinet one time from Colleen Music. I had no idea of future rock stars. When we were kids, that was the best place. You only went to Colleen's Music. That was where you got all sheet music and any instruments. That was the place. Now, Drew Forsyth, Bob told me that, oh, by the way, Quiet Riot's drummer was also in our class. And there he is. The haircut, the bow tie, that's how people dressed in our graduating class. <laughs> Drew Forsyth, the, drummer, the original drummer of Quiet Riot. Recently, I was uh, told that uh, there was a memorial to um, uh, Randy Rhodes. Um, and if you're familiar with Glen Oaks and Alameda, there's a church directly across from the 7-Eleven. And they have a courtyard in the center. And he apparently went, because it's also an elementary school, he went all through school there in elementary till he got to the high school level and then went out and went to Muir and Burbank High. But they have a memorial. Uh, the whole courtyard is a memorial to Randy Rhodes. It's a little garden and has a huge plaque in there. And you can also see a picture of that on Burbank. But, uh, he was a very big local boy. Okay. Planes, trains, oh. <laughs> planes, trains, automobiles, and space vehicles. This is Mike's idea. Yeah. <laughs> I added the space vehicle. Yeah, he is. Well, space bit. Anyway, uh, we're going to start talking about planes. Um, uh, Anybody recognize any famous planes here? <coughs> we're not going to talk at length about these planes. You can read all about them elsewhere. Yes. This is a different sort of direction we're headed. And here we are. Whatever goes up must come down. Most of you will remember. I don't know if you're familiar with the uh, portal of the folded wings, which a lot of uh, famous aviation pilots were buried out of Valhalla and cemetery. But they had this little um, uh, two-winger come down and uh, kind of land. You notice there's not too many graves, so this is early, back in the early 40s at Valhalla. This is now, this is what happens when uh, planes come down in your neighborhood and living near an airport. Fortunately, we haven't had any of this. Uh, 
B-26 uh, landed just off of Hollywood Way and some houses out there. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know, I took these shots. Uh, do you remember the ABC series Flash Forward? Well, we had this airplane yes. crash sort of right next to City Hall. They built it crashed. It was just, <laughs> nobody was injured, it's only Hollywood. As you can see, they trucked it in, slid it off the back of the truck and smashed it up some more and uh, filmed the <laughs> TV series there. Now, how to hide an aircraft factory. The, I, mean, I don't know if any of you are familiar with this, but this is a wonderful, I, some of the things here that we did in this town, Disney got out here and they decided they would help and all of that camouflage netting went across, but it's still, you know, people can see things. The houses are made of cardboard, the trees are made of um, styrofoam and things like that, and they even had supported areas where people would literally were paid to walk back and forth up there to simulate foot traffic. They had, an actor. they had two two areas where people would actually ride bicycles. How would you like to be riding your bike on about a two-foot platform suspended up above about 100 feet on each side of an airplane factory? Uh, you could go down and become a permanent part of the P-38. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, here's a couple more pictures. I love the close-up of the cardboard house there. And the Doesn't that look great? They really do good work. I mean, yeah. see, see why Disney's so popular. They do good work. Okay, we're going to get into trains here. Turkey crossing. Wes, you want to? How many of you are familiar with the phrase turkey crossing? Okay, all right. How many of you know how it got that name? Nobody? Really? Maybe no, sir? How did it get that name, sir? Do you know when, sir? Good. That's the same story I heard. Her. You're not far off. Turkey Crossing, uh, I, I, I went all through the Burbank school system. I never heard this phrase until Mike introduced it to me one day. He sent me a photo and he said, oh, this is a Turkey Crossing intersection. The what? It's a Turkey Crossing intersection. Mike, I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh, it's down by Lockheed where you used to work. It's where Victory Place intersects, or comes close to the tracks. That's Turkey Crossing. <laughs> It now goes underneath, if you've ever been out that way, right. where it comes across. Well, yeah, right there. There's a, oh. <laughs> there is a pedestrian underpass at Turkey Crossing. Uh, City Fathers, it was such a bother having people crossing there, Lockheed dumping out and starting twice each day. No, but they, it's a world 1941 contract Here's a great photo Mike found in 1942. And this is uh, the Lockheed crowd. It's at their, well, 3.30 p.m., so they're letting out, walking up to three place. There's Turkey Crossing right there. Uh, what's really cool is you can see McCain Bridge Park here. Let's see if I can turn back side. Burbank High School is in this photo. Uh, the Freeway Tunnel, like Mark, at this uh, San Fernando Road turns here. Great photo of Turkey Crossing. I love that guy with the scooter. <laughs> That's really cool. The, uh, the guys with the scooters, these guys were all hired here locally. Um, you'll see a couple of patches for the uh, police here. For orientation, for those of you who live here now, Wendy's is right about here on this side. That's, so that tells you about where that is. Now, Turkey Crossing, uh, what happened there and when? We got, a, we got an idea. Apparently it had something to do with turkeys and a railroad train, right? Well, here's what happened. Uh, I was kind of pleased with myself when I bumped into this one. The, uh, this is the article from the 20 December 1899 Los Angeles Times. This happened a while ago. The accident took place on the 18th of December 1899. It was the last Burbank accident of the 19th century, possibly. Long article. What I do with these is in the next one I summarize it. A fellow named Daniel Curtis of Elizabeth Lake, which is at Antelope Valley, he was age 38. He had a wagon load of turkeys for Christmas sales. Live turkeys across the Southern Pacific Railroad tracks at San Fernando Road in the morning. And then the owl train, so here's where the owl meets the turkeys, right? Uh, this is the San Francisco to Los Angeles. Hit the wagon midships, as it's described. Wagon demolished, most of the turkeys killed, two horses killed, so you can imagine the scene. Turkeys flying everywhere, some of them are alive, turkey bodies here. Uh, wagon demolished, the train stopped, picked up Curtis, brought him to Los Angeles, that was nice of them. <laughs> Curtis's telephone and two ribs were broken. Well, that was the first article. You can get some more details here. 
Uh, this is from 1925, and Lancaster Man tells reasons for odd So the name Turkey Crossing had been in use by 1925, being currency. Right? More details. Curtis couldn't see the train because of the trees and bushes near the track. So we have a like an OSHA, like a safety problem, right? He couldn't hear the train because the wind was blowing in the wrong direction. He was thrown 15 or 20 feet into the air by the spring seat. <laughs> so our horse and buggy days, you know, boing. You know that's gonna hurt. Yeah, that's gonna hurt. The <coughs> man near the train tracks, here's the part I like, saw the steps of the coaches pass by overhead, and he had the presence of mind not to get up. So Dead turkeys everywhere, live turkeys, gobble gobble, there's your wagon and demolished, the two horses are killed, you're lying there looking up and you're seeing a train going by. <laughs> he sued Southern Pacific for damages, he even retained a former U.S. Senator as his attorney, and only nominal damages were recovered. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the story of Turkey Cross. Oh, one last thing, uh, 1920 Los Angeles Times, the owl hit a car with three men, so this this isn't the only thing that's happened here. Don't ride a train with the name Al. Al, yeah. <laughs> Find a train with another name, like uh, Stephen Bullet or something. Uh, demolished a car, all three were put in the hospital. One was the liquor warehouse keeper. <laughs> so now we've got this liquor in a warehouse, and the only guy who's got a key has been hit by the owl. Uh, blame the low fog for not seeing the train. One of the men carried the only set of keys to the government liquor warehouse, on 498 North Alameda in Burbank. And as soon as the revenue collector heard of the accident, he sent the man to the hospital to collect the keys. <laughs> so I'm happy to report they didn't <laughs> care about the guy. <laughs> this did not screw up liquor distribution in Burbank. <laughs> okay. We're going to have questions for you, too. So it goes two ways. Next one. Uh, tricky curve. Now this is from 1924, called Turkey Net Curve, which suggests the story wasn't entirely known by everybody because it makes sort of a, a, a kink, and they must have figured, oh, Turkey Crossing is called that because of the way it looks. And it's called an obnoxious reverse turn, <laughs> as it certainly was. Uh, and that's the end of the Turkey Crossing section. This is not a picture of Turkey Crossing. Uh, this is a picture from the Burbank Boulevard Bridge and uh, of one of just the many uh, Burbank Junction uh, crashes that we had here. I don't know if any of you remember, there was a tower under there, like a control tower of an airplane that was right under the bridge, uh, which controlled traffic here. As you can plainly see, it did not work too well. <laughs> anyway, and here in the early 1900s, we have a picture of a, these guys are standing here contemplating how are we going to get this thing back off the track? <laughs> There's only four of us. <laughs> can, we get some, can we get some help, please? Okay, we're going to move on to automobiles. You've all heard of the Road Kings. Is everybody, did you see them all last night? Yeah, we have any Road Kings in the audience? No Road Kings? No, no local royalty? They're all still asleep? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but have you ever heard of the Burbank Throttle Queens? <laughs> now, okay, there's some artistic license here. We don't know that the Throttle Queens were actually Burbank gals. But this picture was so good we couldn't resist it. <laughs> it says, Noise by Rocket Muffler Burbank. So the road queens want you to know they're on the scene and making lots of uh, product queens. Have you ever heard of, pronounce that for me again? <laughs> Suzuki Teru. We have no idea where this name came from. And we have no idea. There's very little about these people. We cannot find anything. But else. we know they wore Orlon jackets. <laughs> And there's the president, Lewis Booker, in 1954. We think they were well financed based on the jackets and the paint job on that car. That wore a long, wasn't cheap. And all of you are familiar with our buddy Jay Leno from The Tonight Show. And if you drive around town here at any given time, since his auto warehouse is out on the edge, you'll see him riding around in various things like this Stanley Steamer. Now, what's awesome about this picture, I like the way he's leaning forward. He's got his goggles on his head, you know. <laughs> Very 1990. He's really into it. I've always liked it. 